Hi, I'm Lee. I'm Joe. And we are the Rewinders, rewatching childhood movies to see if they still hold up. And this time we watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Woo! You are dearly power. You knew that rap song way more than I was. I was never a kid that was into early 80s. Late 80s, early 90s rap. I was going to say, this wasn't early 80s. Yeah, this came out in 1990. Could you sing that whole song at the no, end of it? No, but I enjoyed it. It's called Turtle Power. <laughs> if you remember, though, the first time I, I said, not being recorded, I yeah. totally messed it up. I just had the rhythm down, and it, I knew it ended in power. It sounded good to me. <laughs> it did. And it, then when I actually worked. heard it, I was like, I wasn't that oh, close. Not, not that close, but I remember it a little bit. It was, it's, you know, that time where that good, clean, for oh. Jesus kind of rap was out there. It's more about talking about your sneakers and, yeah. and who your buddies are. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Turtles. Uh, yeah. It was, I know we just got done, we just did He-Man. Yeah. And that was a big part of my life. But then Turtles pushed that aside pretty quickly and yeah. Turtles was the next thing. And actually it was even a bigger, I guess, love of mine childhood of my childhood then well it brought martial arts yep. with it yep it's martial arts and wacky turtles and color coding things <laughs> so i could tell oh that's that's the orange one that's michelangelo cool <laughs> if, they, if they ever made a mistake it's like oh okay we only have to fix this little bit in each frame instead of mistakes a whole bunch. i remember i do remember lots of mistakes in that little sh- those cartoons because they're cheaply made oh, yeah. where yeah. they would just swap bandana color so the wrong turtle will be talking and then it would cut back to the couple frames later a lot of cartoons did that in the 80s i remember when they made the real ghostbusters cartoon mm-hmm. they color coded everyone so everyone had different colored jumpsuits and different colored hair as well so all of a sudden egon who had brown black hair was now blonde yeah yeah wait because they had to color code everyone yeah you got to tumble apart. And of course, they didn't do anything with Winston, but we won't get into that because we're talking <laughs> about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, they didn't do anything to the turtles. They're still yeah, they did. all green. In the comic, which I found out way later afterwards <laughs> as, a, as a kid, teenager, whatever, that, yeah, the, the cartoon was based on a comic that came out two mm-hmm. years before the cartoon hit. And they were all wearing red bandanas. <gasps> and it was a more of a rated R comic. It was a lot more gritty, and they were more vigil- killer vigilantes, and yeah, they they killed people with their weapons, well, that's which makes what sense. Weapons yeah, do really you just don't constantly block every time with all your your weapons and then kick. But uh, what are your memories of turtles? Mine were basically based off of the cartoon because yeah, that's do. I wasn't into comic books when I was. Oh, a kid. The, I'm just saying, yeah, the the cartoon was for me too. Yes. And then later on, I found out. So I really enjoyed the characters of the cartoon when they kind of picked the few picks to be in this movie. Felt kind of like, what happened to all these characters that you had to choose from? Oh, and you sure. whittled them all away. They're like, no Baxter Stockman. No, obviously the big ones, Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah. There's no no mention of Krang or Dimension X. Nope. The just... Rat King. And... Leather ne- Leatherhead. Eh. Was it Leatherneck or Leatherhead? I think his leather head was the ga- the gator, the robot turtle. And I think it, you know, money probably played into that and pushed it out as fast as they could to make I think I think it, it was fine though because it it was introducing you to it to all this weird crap happening. And yeah, I mean, yeah. you write money, of course, because it was technically an independent movie and didn't have much money. And and it shows. I mean, yes, it, it's not like they had bad casting or anything in it. It's just like some people We'll just say April O'Neil didn't really look the part. I didn't like her even as a kid because it wasn't. No. It, she didn't look like April. Nope. She's fine, though. Yeah, she's she's, play, fine. she's playing her own version, and that's yeah. fine. But Casey Jones was fine. Casey Jones was good. But he was such a secondary character that yep. it was, why is he in the first movie right away? <laughs> oh, he's a human, so that's easy to do. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, and Casey Jones wasn't that big of a thing, I remember, from the cartoon. He no. was in a couple episodes, but he wasn't as big. He as... would appear off and on, but not. not yeah, he wasn't alive. always there. So this movie, what threw him in there? Yeah, but had lots of the toys, 
Lots, I, lots, I, think I had I more the toys. Base toys yeah. and didn't really mm-hmm. expand off of that. So this was you really weren't into the turtles as much really as say like only He-Man. Had the four turtles, and I don't know if I got any figures outside of. Oh. Maybe I got a. Maybe there was a Splinter figure. I don't know, but there. We, there I didn't go as hog wild with the figures Ooh. this time. I mean, there there were too many iterations. There was He-Man get a bunch of figures. There was G.I. Joe with a bunch Thunder of figures. Thundercats was another big one. Didn't have a... I just had the main core group of Thundercats. I remember my parents, it was hard for them to find Thundercats. All, the, all I got was Leonardo. Not Leonardo. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're messing I did, uh, Yeah. Uh, Lion-O. Lion-O yeah. And Panthro. And that was it. Uh, but I had, more, I had a lot of turtles. That was, I guess, easier to find in the stores yeah, or something. I didn't end up with a lot of the toys, but I played with the toys I had quite a bit. So who was your favorite turtle? It's boring. It's Michelangelo was my favorite everyone, turtle. Because everyone likes Michelangelo. He is a party dude. I know, but now it's just like, wow, I just and, had no individuality whatsoever. But he's that. fun. He's happy. loves pizza. He just didn't I guess. I, no. I, that was, I, and nunchucks were a big thing. They were. Nunchucks in the 80s, oh, yeah. huge. Appar- Size in the 80s, what? Come on. No one knew what that was. No. It was more nunchucks. Yeah, everyone knew nunchucks. Yeah. And uh, apparently they were, obviously, or because you could easily conceal them or whatever as weapons, they were prohibited in the UK. And so when this movie came out, they had to edit all the scenes anytime Michelangelo lo- used nunchucks, <laughs> which is quite a bit in this movie. <laughs> So what did they do in the nunchuck I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just, they, they cut that whole they nunchuck They danced at each yeah. other. Yeah, they just waved. And <laughs> that was it. My turtle was, at first, it was Donatello mm-hmm. because he was the nerd. And then started changing it, and I like Leonardo more. I remembered you being a Leonardo yep. guy. Yep. Oh, wait, you remember being a Leonardo guy? <laughs> you, seem, you smell like a Leonardo <laughs> kind of guy. All right, the movie. Did you see this in theaters? I did. I believe I did. Yes, this was huge, a huge event because the the I, it was so hard to watch trailers back then. If you missed the trailer on TV, you missed it. If you happen to see it, I and mean, it, I still think this was in the time where trailers were stupid. This was a great trailer. I went okay. and rewatched it because I remember it not being like the other trailers, oh, and then I watched okay. it again, and it's it's ahead of its time trailer because it doesn't say, in a world, yeah. these four brothers must... It had no voiceover. It just had peppy music and clips and just... Cool. It was then and Then it must really have been well at the done. front end of the shorter trailer because yeah. all the way up through the 80s, they had long trailers. They were, yeah, it was a short... Exactly. Boring. Yeah. Had the poster where they're all coming out of the sewer... They're all like peeking, huh? peeking out, and you see New York City. Yeah, I had to go see this one in the theaters. Good. So, so then I did, and now we're rewatching it to see Whoa. if it still holds up or if nostalgia is too strong. So uh, <laughs> get into it. The movie obviously supposedly starts in New York City, but apparently it's somewhere in North Carolina, mm-hmm. <laughs> which well, I, I learned. Yeah, but I do like that they did shoot some scenes in New York City, which is good. They attempted mm-hmm. just a little bit, then try to blend. Cities together, which is sure. fine. And we get introduced to April O'Neil by her doing a voiceover about all these thieves invest- infesting the city uh, while they're showing teenagers doing the stealing and passing off things to each other and making it way too complicated for what it should be. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you see a ginger, a Sid ginger. He's wearing a Sid Vicious, not Sid Vicious, is it? Sure. Sid, it just says Sid. It's Sid and Nancy the from the Sex Pistols, and I think his last name was Vicious. Sure. So I, I'm going to call him Sid Ginger because <laughs> he's always wearing a Sid <laughs> shirt. Danny or Danny. Danny, I think Danny his name is. Danny. Yeah, and he's yeah pickpocketing, it's... handing it off to ninjas in broad daylight. Yes. All right. And then they take us to this warehouse on an island, which is, you know, probably, you know, a uh, three-mile island. I don't know. Maybe. I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, just giving you an idea of what the thievery is going on, and ninjas are involved somehow. Well, yeah, earlier there was an old lady watching television, and on this had a sticker on the side that said "I heart at, uh, New York City," and yeah. and they steal her crappy, crappy television. You yeah. know, as a kid, it was why are they stealing that old lady's television? That's For a piece of garbage. Funnies. Oh, because she goes, oh, you 
teenage kids. Then after all the shenanigans of stealing things, it's the end of April shift and she's leaving yep. WTKV. I have no three. idea. It doesn't matter. It looks like it's a warehouse in the middle of nowhere. It, yeah, they just slapped a, a it's TV a TV uh, studio. But importantly, she's wearing and the only time she's wearing only time she's wearing her yellow jacket, which she should be wearing a yellow jumpsuit. And she's wearing a yellow, sl- like, slicker uh, long coat yeah, instead, something, yeah. which doesn't look good at all, but, but they're, they're saying, just trying to trigger yep. the whole, oh, this is April This is April O'Neil. O'Neil. Yeah, We know is... she just said her name on TV not but long ago, let's... but we're reinforcing yep. the fact that this is April O'Neil. Yep. She walks around the corner, there's a bunch of teenagers and stuff pulling things out of a live truck that would never be in a live truck. And she yells at Sam Rockwell, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, I, I'm just trying to break into the business. <laughs> Sam Rockwell was a head thug. And okay. he's in here. Okay. He's like I, I 21. I didn't even realize. Yeah. He's, he's, he's one with a white shirt that's always ripped. And he talks. He has a couple of speaking parts later huh. on. But that's, yeah. He starts to dance and he's like, because mm-hmm, he's a good dancer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. They're taking a bunch of stuff that doesn't actually belong in a, yeah, or in are a actually truck. in a live truck. They're like, lady, you showed up at the wrong time in the wrong place or something like that. And then they, you know, pull switchblades and they're going to go get her. But then the magic sigh comes flying out of nowhere and smashes the one and only light that's lighting up this whole area. It hits it and this one goes, it just dims the light. Instead of breaking and the light turning off immediately, it hits the light bulb. Then the light dims slowly down. Because it's like, oh, oh, poor light. Oh, I was up here for 30 years. (laughs) Oh, Damn Jeez, side. my job is over now. You, you I'm going to have to ma- collect unemployment. You magic uh, side. Then. <laughs> Goofy ninja, ninja fight, fight sound. Yeah. So- sounds. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. And then the lights come back up. Uh, not because the, the police instantly yeah. show up. Because, you the know, in lights. New York City, we see... April O'Neil all like whoa whoa and all the kids all tied up. Yep. And the police officer as the shot like either drifts away or fades up. He's like, Oh, this again? Like this isn't the first time they found this. Mm-hmm. But then April yoinks Raph's side and he's yep. watching and he says, Damn, damn. Now I remember distinctly that this was a huge deal for it, this movie. It was a huge deal. That parents really didn't parents, like this. Parents hated this movie because they're saying, damn, ninja kicked the damn rabbit, I think they say later on, and they're screaming. It was violent. They're using weapons. Yeah, I remember parents hating this movie. My and, parents didn't care. Yeah, well, I I was saying damn as a kid because my parents... I think it was more with the swearing that they cared about. That, yeah. But that's the thing, is that not everyone considers damn to be a swear word. Obviously, I grew up with a family that didn't consider it being a swear word. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it kind of, to me, marks probably the starting of what is considered helicopter parenting, where it's like over involvement in what your kids are. Because, like, this is about okay. the time where yeah. it stopped. I mean, when we grew up, well, we just left the house and went, yeah, we were, we were for hours. 70s, and then we'd come yeah, back. Early that 80s kids. 90s didn't. That's true. Started clamping down on that. Mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame uh, Tipper Gore. Oh, Tipper. I guess. <laughs> And Judas Priest. That is uh, tick one on the damn count for the movie. There is, yeah, a couple dams. Then, yeah, the music kicks in. We yeah, see because this logo. is all cold open right right yeah. away, and then the logo comes out, which is basically the, the same as the a cartoon. Same as a cartoon, yep. and it all wiggles. It, oh yeah, it slides in and wiggles out or spins out or something. And then Leonardo jumps in, and yeah. you're like, "Shit, yeah!" It was a good reveal. Great because they're building. You could see the shadows in in the sewers. It's building up. It's got fun music. It's building up. Oh, they're coming around the corner. Oh no, wait. Oh, they're talking. You hear them. They're laughing. We kicked asses. Woo! We did a good job. And then Leo jumps out, and they look fucking awesome. Yeah, those suits look great. I I still like them. They still look fantastic. Jim Henson, obviously, yeah. Creature Works do good things. Yep, Jim Henson's awesome work and yeah robotic heads and eyes and then puppeteer inside and ro- just yeah remote control everything yeah awesome i can't <laughs> i can't use words good to describe how awesome they look 
they weren't on par all the time. A couple Sometimes. times you could tell them that they would slip. It, you, you could tell yeah. it was a robot, like a, its eye and mouth wouldn't be completely or in sync. the mouth was doing overdrive because the eyebrows weren't yeah. on or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's 1990, and oh, yeah. they look like the turtles from yep. the cartoon. They all look distinct, too. They all don't have the exact same face and head shape. I love a lot. Don, like, Donnie's a little more squinty and flat-headed. Mike has bigger eyes and more not as big of a head. And Raph, who's angry, he looks like Wolverine because he's basically Wolverine in this movie. <laughs> I guess. I remember being a kid and not understanding why Ralph was Raph. Raph was acting the way he was. It didn't yeah. seem to fit his cartoon character. It didn't. He, they they gave him a, another another little thing where he he has rage issues. Yeah. He's Which, got he, as an adult, okay. He's I a he's that, a lone wolf. Yeah. But as a kid, it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Everyone else matched pretty much pretty spot well. on. Donatello wasn't was, as nerdy, wasn't but as he was nerdy. smarter than the others because he would he would use bigger words or notice things. And he worked on the truck. And he worked on the truck. It's a mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to try my best to not talk about the second one because we're going to do that one next. And But <laughs> the comparisons and how things change from this movie to that, I'll, I'll try to... Does I'll save uh, it for the second movie. Senor Ferdinand do the voice in the second one. Senor Ferdinand. Um, Frankie Valley. Okay, um, wait. Let's let's see if Joe can figure out who the, who voices Colin Donatello. Colin Farrell. Okay, you're getting way further away. Uh, Corey Feldman. There you go. I had the C and F. I knew you could do it. <laughs> I was getting there. Yeah, Corey Feldman does the voice of Donatello, and then it's just other voice actors for the other turtles. It's it's no one else famous. There wasn't a big deal made about it, but, you know, why did they get a different voice for Leonardo, for example? The original voice for Leonardo. Cam Clark. Yeah. And I like- very great. Very, and to me, that's who Leonardo yes. is. And the only other thing that uh, goes to me is Akira, those two uh, things that he did. But I don't understand why he wasn't. I'm Who knows? But to me, I just didn't understand why they didn't do that. Maybe Cam Clark. He was big in the 80s and mm-hmm. doing voiceover for almost everything. He did Robotech as well. He was yeah. Rick Hunter. And, yeah, he's he's around. See, I didn't watch a lot of Robotech. Oh, okay. So well, we'll, we'll talk about Matt Ross <laughs> later. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, but fantastic yes. introduction to all four of the Turtles. Mm-hmm. And then another we another, get another dam from – because they're all – Cheering, but in the back is oh, yeah, Raph, yeah. and he's, he's, he looks at his side. He only has one side now. Damn. Got to drive that point home. Yep. Well, yeah. So they get back to their underground facilities, mm-hmm. and they're all pumped and psyched that they beat up kids. <laughs> they, saved, they saved somebody from mugging. That's true. Possible accidental murder or yeah. something. But they're proud. But they're, they, they yeah. beat up on kids. They did beat up on they kids. They bragged to Splinter. But, they're tur- they're only fifteen years old themselves, even though they're cut. <laughs> they're only, only like five two tall, but they all they're all muscular, yeah, and mutant and ninja well, turtles. Well, it you couldn't be a mutant or a ninja turtle if you didn't have muscles. I meant like good muscles, <laughs> that good definition and tone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cut from the turtle gods, he was. <laughs> So then they they try to be all polite and stuff to Splinter because Splinter's like now you gotta meditate on what you've done and, and Leonardo's like oh, suck yeah like oh we had our first battle and mm-hmm. we were victorious. Michelangelo goes and just orders a pizza <laughs> when everyone's supposed to be meditating. Uh, like, like and then when they actually do start to do the meditating, then they do a dance off instead. Yeah. They, da, 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 da. And they're all dancing and having fun. And it's a little cheesy and it's lame. Cheesy, but I like it. I thought it worked. It, it's still fun. Yeah. And yeah, but Raph, he's got to get out of there. He's got to go watch a movie. He's got to go watch a movie. And he goes and watches a movie. <laughs> yes. We got to watch that movie sometime. He watches the movie Critters. Yes. We see him later on walking out of it. And then, yeah. <laughs> what are they <laughs> making this movie? Anyway, so they have to get the pizza. The pizza guy's late because the number doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. Michelangelo is a dick about it and is like, no way, man. Three bucks off because we sent you to an address that doesn't exist. And yeah, you have to put the 
pizza down into a sewer grate. And he doesn't tip. Nope. He only yeah, gives him a 10, and that's it. Yep. It's got to be hard for them to get money, though. Like, what do they do for income? They just I'm assuming they, that when they beat up those kids, they, they just uh, took, stole their money. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Although, that's not fair, though, because they're stealing other people's money, so then they're stealing from the stealer. So they're stealing... They're second-rate the stealers. The hypocrisy of the turtles. Fuck Unless turtles. they're just scavenging, you know, money that goes down the grates and stuff like that. Because this is New I'm York. Joking. People it's chuck fine. money down into the... <laughs> I suppose. I don't know. They, I don't know. They, they dance. They do? They get pictures taken on... Uh-huh. Uh, and it would be like, hey, you're getting your picture taken with the Ninja Turtles. They're like, woo, five bucks. Aww. But no one knows who the turtles are. They're ninjas. You're not supposed to know who they are yet. They're not. They're not infamous yet. Okay. But what I do like is uh, the the pizza delivery guy. Yeah, he is Michelangelo, I believe. He he is the bodysuit guy for Michelangelo. Cool. Mm-hmm. They do that a couple times in this movie. Nice. But they put the actual actors in as themselves in human human things. <laughs> in roles, hum- human things, human roles. I should say. <laughs> anyway, instead of yeah. Uh, well, and Ralph. Oh, Raphael leaves the, the movie. You having a hard time saying his name? Yes, I am. Raph. Raphael. We didn't even I'm, go through the turtles. I mean, well, maybe I'm you're, just assuming you're assuming people, people have watched this. We have Leonardo. But he, he leads. Yes. He's got a blue. And he, he uses. Kitanas. He uses two katanas. And then we got Donatello. He's the smart, nerdy one. And he's got purple. And he has a bow staff. Mm-hmm. Then Michelangelo. Who's orange? He's a party dude. That's his nunchucks. And he's got nunchucks. And then Raph is the angry one, I guess. Yes. He's also cool, I guess. I guess. And he's dressed up at like Humphrey Bogart. So that's his disguise to go out to go yeah. watch critters. And he's red and he has size. Sorry about, about those two things. Splinter is a rat. Yeah, and they got mutated. But we'll and, get and yeah. Raph <laughs> is leaving the movie. Uh a lady who's clutching her purse. Very stupidly to her chest, yeah. has teenagers steal her purse. Yoink. So he's gonna stop it. He trips the the kids, yeah. and then he chases them into the park because he's gonna go beat the nuts off their sacks. And then Casey Jones gets in the way, and he and beats the nuts sacks off of them, <laughs> and then starts beating Raph's nut sack. And then there's no sacks or nuts left to be had. They, they all the sacks go away after Casey Jones whips out his cricket his bat. cricket bat, and Raph doesn't know what a cricket bat does, so he gets uppercut hit. To understand what cricket is, you gotta know what a crumpet is. I, I didn't really, know what cricket was as a kid. <laughs> I had no I idea what they were talking about. Rant from Raphael, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, a, ho- a Jose Canseco bat. Tell me, did he pay money for this? But Casey Jones is a sports guy. He's yeah. got tons of sports weapons and a hockey mask. Bats, yep. Hockey mask. He yeah, he does. He looks like Wayne Gretzky on steroids. Yes, which is a line later on. I love watching movies that mention Wayne Gretzky. Why is that? I don't know. I just because the movies don't do that anymore. If I write a movie, okay, I'm gonna put Wayne Gretzky's name at least somewhere in it. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, okay. I got nothing. <laughs> so it introduces us to Casey Jones. Um, you sound like you don't like Casey Jones. He's okay. I liked him. I like the actor they got yeah. for this because he's having fun with it and beating the crap out of vigilantes. Sure. And Raph's like, I don't. I think you're gonna be too beating up. I was yeah. only going to minorly beat them up. He smacks them good they across the face. They share the beatings. Yeah. Then Raph gets beat. Yes. And he calls him like he calls him like a punk, a punkard or something. Like, and he he realizes that he's not just a regular person; that he's yeah. actually a some sort of mutant ninja turtle. Then calls him a freak. Well, because he has a bald head. He's green. Green. He's yeah. Bulbous. Yeah. I. It, they play up the fact that it's that cartoon logic where yep. he's wearing a trench coat, so obviously I can't see. it's still a person, even though you can see his full face. Yep, it's true. And that he's only got three fingers, or whatever it is. That too. So, eh, it's fine. Freak! Freak! <laughs> chases chases Casey, and he almost gets hit by a car, and in the back seat is the actor who plays Raphael, so that was kind of funny. And then yells, Dead! So that's count number three for the damn count. I believe we're on three. He gets back home and Splinter has a conversation with him about, you know, you you gotta you gotta 
You got to work that sit, stuff out, kid. You got to simmer down now. <laughs> That's, you're angry. Let's talk about you being angry. I don't know. He does a good touching yeah. talk, like a fatherly talk of you're, all, all, all four of you need to be together and you've got problems because you go headlong by yourself while the others come at each other. Just remember, I know you're working shit out, but just remember we're all here for, their, here for you. So, yeah. So remember that. Then it's the next morning, and for some reason, April's boss yeah. always comes to her apartment. So weird. To think... me, that is creepy, and she should get a new job somewhere else I because think... that is inappropriate. I think one time, one late night, they slept together, and he's still like coming by, and like that can be the only thing that because it... it's there's no reason for it. No, and he's not. I mean, he's not creepy about it, but no. it's just odd. It that's it's. And Not, oh, and here's my teenage ginger son. Yeah, who then steals money yeah. out of April's wallet. Yep, and he does he saying like, "Hey, why don't you lay off, lay off the police? They're really busting my balls or something." I don't really remember the dialogue. Well, he has a, some sort of deal with the chief of police yeah. that they don't ask too many questions, and then he lets them have interviews or something. I don't know. Yeah, it, and it, she's like, "I'm a reporter, chief. I gotta do what I'm gonna do." Yeah. Basically, and I think. She does. And then, yeah, she, and then she does. <laughs> Chief of Police is on TV. He's all like, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, blah, then we cut blah, to an interview. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. He's saying things that are just talking in circles and not saying. We're going to have better response all. time. Things that mean nothing. Uh, we see the Foot Clan stealing TVs out of trucks and Shredder does not like seeing April O'Neill bring up. The fact that she's like, hey, so what about she, this Foot Clan business? Yeah, she talked to the people in Little Tokyo, yeah. and so she's getting more info that it could. There's a thing called the Foot Clan, and they existed in Japan, feudal Japan, yeah. And now this is exactly like that. And why aren't we talking about this? Yeah, and the chief doesn't know what even she's talking about. Really, he has no. He has. No, he's clueless. Yeah. He doesn't know what's going on. No, he doesn't. Yeah, but sure, throws a knife at one of the televisions, like like he's Elvis or something. Elvis was fam- if you didn't know Elvis was famous for having four TVs and if you don't like something he would break a TV. That's the, I knew that's, about the sandwiches. That was in the, and he was eating eating uh, peanut butter and pe- peanut and ba- peanut butter and banana bacon sandwiches. It's the way to live. He didn't die on the shitter. <laughs> uh we see Danny getting arrested in the background. Ralph tails April because he Ralph? wants his- God damn it. <laughs> it's okay. I have I spell Ralph. Nope. I, in all all of my notes I spell it Ralph. That's why I'm Ralph. saying it. That way. Ralph. So if I continue, eh. I'm gonna let it go. Okay. So he tails April to get his sigh back, follows her into the subway. Subway's filled with ninjas. <laughs> Miss O'Neill, I am using stereotypical accent. Now I'm going to open hand slap you. <laughs> And then he does. Yeah, she tries taking out the side of that she had on her, yeah, and then gets kicked no off. Idea. She gets knocked out pretty quickly. Then I like Raph grabs it, and he comes in, yeah. and the camera's shaking, and kicks the crap out of all the ninjas and, t- and yoinks her into the sewers. Once again, beating up teenagers. I, apparently, two of the teenagers were Scott Wolf and Skeet Ulrich. They were background ninja huh. uh, Foot Clan members. All right, so then. go ahead and kick those two fuckers in the face. <laughs> you doing okay, Joe? Yeah, you got it. You want me to take over? No, I'm I'm good. You gonna plow through? I all right. I got to be able to read better. That's my problem. So <laughs> Ralph picks her up and takes her into the takes April into the sewers and puts her on the couch. The other turtles. Can we keep her? Yeah, says Mikey. She screams a lot when she wakes up. Like an inhale scream. Then Splinter gives backstory. Yeah, we get cool backstory of what they are. She thinks she's dreaming, but oh, I, I, oh yeah, and we didn't talk about how Splinter talks like stereotypical. Well, he is Jap- He's a Japanese rat. Yeah, we find so out that's this, why he talks. I talk like this. I am Kevin Clash. <laughs> I am the voice of Elmo. That's who that is. Yeah, he's, he was. Okay. He, yep, he's the voice of Elmo, and then he got a little bit of trouble. Yeah, he's maybe not, he hasn't been Elmo. In maybe a long uh, time. he did some things to some teenage boys he shouldn't have, and uh, he's no longer Elmo. 
or Splinter, which is fine. But we get backstory. I'm sorry. Yes. And then the backstory, they, they mess with the the film, so it looks like either VHS or 8 Yeah, it looks really weird quality, gritty. Yeah. And the backstory is different from the cartoon. It goes yes. It goes with the, the comic book, which is, yeah, Splinter was a rat, and the cartoon, he was a human. Mm-hmm. And the, but the same thing happens where they get – they're in a sewer and they find a canister of mutagen, of, of ooze, that transforms them all. Yeah. Yep. And then the turtles are get bigger and bigger and they say, radical, 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 <laughs> pizza. I like how the ooze container looks like a cartoon prop. Yep. Everything mm-hmm. else is gritty and dark and then <laughs> yeah, there's this cartoony – TCR thing. I, TC, yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's just – I like that. Now – I mean, I'm, I'm talking about other stuff because I love the turtles so much. But do you know how they got to be uh, the, the origin story? Or like why it, the origin story is that way? Because in this was made in 84 and uh, uh, Daredevil was really popular in the 80s because of Frank Miller. Mm-hmm. And how you know, if you know how Daredevil got his powers, he was a boy and he saw a truck going out of control. He pushed a man out of the way and the chemicals that were in the back of the truck – hit his eyes and, and transformed him into Daredevil, basically. But then it cuts, and then the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cart comic cuts to that that same truck, and the mutagen goes into the sewers, and that's where the turtles are. So it's the exact same mm. stuff that transforms them. And so in Daredevil, you have his mentor is, is called Stick, and here we have Splinter. Okay. And then you have, they're always fighting the hand, those are the ninjas, and now here they're fighting the foot clan, the foot. Okay, I'll, uh... I had no idea about any of that. Such a, such a nerd. So how does... Can't explain everything. It's a combination ben, of many things. Ben, uh, Ben Affleck fit into this? Uh, he don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a Ben Affleck joke, and, uh, uh he, he, he fucking rocked in Phantoms, I guess. How about Reindeer Games? He was, oh, Reindeer Games we don't talk about. <laughs> I've never seen Reindeer Games, but... Uh, okay. I anyway, I can't, I can't think of a joke to make fun of Ben Affleck. I am so sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, not on my A-game. We just got done with work. We're t- I'm a little tired. I'm going to drink this alcohol and let Joe take over. April takes... Well, she doesn't take them. They guide her back to her apartment, and she feeds them pizza, and they are happy, turtles. Uh, and then after they're done doing their impressions and talking and making you friends... dirty rat. You kill my brother, you dirty rat. Mm-hmm. Kenny Lacey. Okay. They return back to the sewers because and see that their place is trashed because yep. when they first initially went af- down there after be saving April, yep. one Foot Clan member trailed them one, and yep. then was like, oh, what the hell? Yeah, he had good- It's a freak show down here. He had good sneaking- Stats. He, yeah. was, he had higher sneaking stats than fighting stats. Yes. And so he was, yeah. So then they all came back and trashed the place looking and for... Whatever, and then... But and they, then they stole Splinter. Yep, yoink. And Which I wasn't sure if they were trying to make it seem like Splinter was dead. They, because they his showed the pile chair, of stuff. His, yeah, his chair was all smashed, but I don't know either. But uh, we do know that... No, it doesn't say damn here, but Raph yells, lets out a really ragey scream here, yes, too. and it echoes out of the sewer. Mm-hmm. They return back to April because... Splinter. Yeah. Leonardo says that's all. And then they hang out in her apartment for wacky things to happen. Yep. Because in the morning... That guy. Charles is in charge. Oh, his name is and Charles? He, yeah, the boss. Ugh. And he shows up and he's like, God damn it, April. I told right. you. And he brings his son again. Because, you know, there's no better way to woo a woman than to yell at her and show her your teenage Ginger boy. Son. Like, huh? Look what I have to offer. I've done it once before. I can do at it again. <laughs> Wait a minute. April is red-haired. That's their love child. That's why he keeps bringing, her, bringing him over. Like, you have to pay attention to our son, April. <laughs> I'm just realizing <laughs> that's exactly what happened. That one night they were w- working late. They ate some pizza together, had a couple of drinks, yeah, celebrated maybe, and then that yep happened 15 years ago. And then popped out this little redheaded Sid bastard, Ginger. Yeah, Sid Ginger. So he starts seeing turtles and mirrors and stuff, and he's like, "Oh my!" Oh, the oh, Sid my. Ginger, yeah. But they ninja ninja yeah, vanish. Yeah, they they they, they avoid do it. Something Phew. else. So 
he goes to the kid warehouse. <laughs> yeah. The kid warehouse where you can do anything. Yep. So, yeah, all the kids are stealing stuff. They're unpackaging things. They're the little pans. They're little foot clan, like, recruits <laughs> where they are stealing stuff and, and mer- moving merchandise. But they also get to eat Burger King and yeah. Whoppers, play Narc, the video game, yep. skateboard on cool skateboard ramps. Bad dudes. Don't forget bad, bad dudes. Bad dudes. Smoke. There are yeah. kids smoking cigars. Even when, like, new recruits come down the steps, uh, Sam Rockwell is telling them, you guys can do anything you want here, anything you want. And then one kid's like, got some cigarettes, regular or menthol. And that entertained me as an adult because I was mm-hmm. like, you proposed to a bunch of kids that they could do anything. Yes. And the you first thing that? they wanted to do was smoke? S- sm- some, yeah. What? Well, these these were around. It's hard to get cigarettes. They're probably 14, 15. Uh, see, I don't know. I, I like it. If I was that old, and I'd be like faced with the, all that stuff, because it, it kind of looks like um that movie uh, with the hack hackers. A little bit, yeah, because it's neon that, lights, yeah, and there's there's just stuff. There's stuff happening everywhere, and there's all this stuff, and they say you can do anything. Cigarettes just would not come to mind right away. You just go cut right to like black tar heroin. You'd be like, where is that? See, I was Sweet thinking Mexican. About, about all the sociopath kids they're pulling in that are like, I want a knife. Okay, here you go. And start running around the warehouse stabbing other kids. Jeez. This is, I mean, this movie's a little bit darker than a cartoon, but jeez. I don't think you're going to go that route. <laughs> but yeah, this is the idea that, that Shredder gets all these kid runaway kids. He's going to transform them somehow into his army of foot soldiers. Yeah, swo- you get to them and be like, oh, you can, I'll let you do anything. I'm your I'm, real family here. Oh, yeah, you see how he comes we out and they show him. you. Yeah. And I think he looks cool. Like the outfit that the Shredder looks in. They make in. him look kind of like the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Bigger shoulder pads than the cartoon. Well, yeah. Not in the pointiness, but as Just in bigger the to, underneath to make, the pointy. Because the guy that got, <laughs> got wasn't that big. I mean, yeah. I, I would want a, a bigger, more imposing guy. But it it works. Yeah. It, it makes fine. sense, though, because, it's 80s. I mean, tech, I mean, technically he's Japanese and the, they on like, average are a little bit smaller. And they like shoulder pads? Is they, that what you're trying to get they at? They love shoulder It's not just shoulder pads. He's wearing a cape. He knows, <laughs> he, he knows what he likes. He knows what he's about. <laughs> The Vin Diesel speech, we're family here, yeah. and I am your father. He was the main attraction at the gong show that night. He was, and all the kids are hanging out watching him. It's like, we have to crush these mutant turtles, because they have Splinter tied up yeah. on a chain, and he looks all sad, and they beat the fuck out of him, and he's all... I had a false memory like during him. this scene. Yeah. I expected a kid, someone to call out Shredder not being that tough, and then huh. him kicking that kid's ass ass nope because all that happens is he tells him that yeah i'm your father he he uh he gives one of the yeah. one of the kids graduates and becomes a, a ninja and puts a headband on him says you two all you guys can do this and that my thought is the first time you see this like okay you're you're told on the street whatever you're a runaway you never had a family whatever some kid says hey want to hang out in this Kid warehouse where you can do whatever you want and smoke, gamble, have a knife apparently, and stab people. That's what Joe would do. <laughs> then, then all of a sudden, they show you this. And like, Wait a minute. No, 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 no. I don't want to do any of Some that. Some sort of pyramid scheme no, crap No, no, no. I have here. to learn how to do martial arts, and then I have to follow rules. And then you want me to hunt mutant turtles? Nah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm going to leave. And then you just see a bunch of kids just start leaving at this point. Yeah. yeah. The Shredder's not that charismatic. Yeah. So... I guess all I can imagine is that I'm combining movies at this point and sure. making myself convince it by adding elements of show enough getting called out in the movie theater. Joe's referring to another 80s movie <laughs> called The Last Dragon. Yes. Which is also a great, awesome, fun movie, which we'll eventually get to. But uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking too much about this. I'll let you continue with the plot. No, it's okay. Uh, and yeah, when he mentions he's going to go beat up those turtles. Yes, the turtles. Then uh, Danny's all like, um, excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, I sir? think I know where uh, they are. Uh, I'm going to raise my hand and walk forward awkwardly. But uh, uh, you, you believe I saw some turtles today? Uh, you got some turtles? I, I like turtles. <laughs> he's too old to be the I like turtles kid. And that's smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm hating on this ginger. (laughs) (laughs) 
at April's apartment. Yes. Ralph. <laughs> I didn't. That's you, man. Goes to the roof and practices his ninjutsu. Because, because they were watching April on the news and she's talking more about the Foot Clan. And all the turtles are like, ooh, she's so hot. Mm-hmm. And then April says, I would like to thank Raphael for saving me. And yeah. that's when they all start making fun of Raphael. And that's when he has enough. He's like, oh, you leave me alone. I think he's I think he's blushing, says, <laughs> says Donatello in a Corey so he, Feldman voice. Yeah. So Ruff goes to the roof and starts doing ninja moves. He, he's trying to punch out his anger. Yeah. Meanwhile, two buildings away, Casey. Herb Alert is on the roof. <laughs> he's yeah, watching. Well, he's homeless. He's got nothing to do, but <laughs> maybe you'll see some lady uh, sun, sunbathing. Something. I'm I'm assuming that's why he's on the rooftop with bi- binoculars. He's got a ra- – I think he has a police radio and he's trying to listen. Yeah. We'll say that. That's his cover. <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. I'm just I'm – just, it's a police radio. I'm, a, I'm just trying to see if anyone thinks bad is happening in the neighborhood. Ma'am, put your to- – don't put your top back on. Ma'am, ma'am. I'm sorry. Here, I'll take my shirt off. Does that, does that, does that help even Come on. things out? Then back on April's roof is the Foot Clan starts coming all out over the place because of Danny. Yep. And he's like, Come on, guys. How are you going to beat me? Says Raph. Mm-hmm. And they all kind of move in. There's more than like 30 of them. He's like, Good answer. Oh, good answer. They had. They had hit up enough to take his th- size away. And then they start beating the fuck out of him. Oh, yeah. And they are. Yeah. They're kicking him in the fucking head. Mm-hmm. He's not looking good. <laughs> While inside the building, April yeah. is back and she's giving everyone the tour of the... Because, yeah, this is in the, from the comic. First floor where she runs a antique shop Who's that her, her father nope. used to run. Second second time around, I think it's called, the, the antique place. Did not understand this at all as a kid. No. Didn't just... I, it blew past me. Probably because I was in shock of... They're killing Raphael up there, and the other turtles aren't helping. They don't know what's happening. My God, he's a hero. How is he getting hurt this badly? <laughs> Tweaks out your See? heroes can't be hurt it's, complex. Yep. it's um, uh, My mind is, no. <laughs> <laughs> when they're done taking the tour, they go back to the apartment, and then they're like, well, maybe we should go get Ra- Raph. And oh, then he, he comes, likes it. <laughs> he comes through the uh, roof uh, ceiling Window. <laughs> uh, Sky. Joe's brain working window. things through. <laughs> they throw him through a skylight, crashing down. It's a window. It's not a light. And it lets light in, yes. you know, and it's in the sky. So and they drop him down. Leo and says he's like, alive, oh. but just barely. And then all the ninjas come in, and yes. they have an awesome fight scene. Oh, we have the nun chuck off. Yep. Oh, the off. fellow chuckery. Which is fun. I enjoy Great. That. Love That's- that. That's great. They're just basically going to town. Uh, this is where I first noticed that Leonardo brings out his katanas and then immediately gets them knocked away, so he can't use them the entire fight. Or yeah, or he's getting blocked. Or he, or yeah, exactly. And but it I, makes sense because he would be murdering everyone then. Yeah, instantly. <laughs> he'd just be go oh, and you're all dead. In the cartoon, they were robots, so it didn't matter. And that was a great move, but it would be difficult here to do yeah. robots. It's already far fetched premise and the movie is taking things pretty it's somewhat serious yeah too. somewhat serious it has goofy moments but it's taking itself seriously it's so doing a decent blend of what kids knew from the cartoons yes, and, and the, then what people expected from the comics and it goes back and forth from raskin his ass kicked to funny things happening mm-hmm. fun dialogue of Mikey gets knocked down to the ground, and he tells Donatello, Wheel of Fortune, dude! And he spins him, so he's hitting a mm-hmm. bunch of them. Fun stuff like that is going on. Water being spit. The uh, Foot Clan get these axes. huge halberds or axes, Bangs, and they yeah. just start chopping up the floor because apparently they're that bad at doing they were just what they street, do. They're just terrible street kids. One of them is Scott Wolf. You don't you, you think Scott Wolf can hit <laughs> Michelangelo on the ground? No, of course not. Until the point where more Foot Clan members show up and jump in, and they're like, "Oh, maybe you should think twice about this." And they collapse the floor and fall fall into, into the yeah the first floor now first with floor. all the stuff down there. Continue the fight until the door flings open and everybody stops. Yeah, sure, because. 
It's Wayne Gretzky on Gretzky on steroids. Yep, Casey Jones. So he comes to help out. So now you have Tetsu. The uh, we forgot. We even talked about uh, Shredder second in command. Yeah, Tetsu. Tetsu. So mm. big. Mm. Doesn't speak much. Gruff. No, I am actual Japanese warrior. Mm. Guy who you know I, trains all the kids to be fighters. Yeah, he's their trainer and sensei and yeah, mm. second in command. And he actually is a badass martial artist guy. He does have that air about him. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. But here, he's just standing in the background. Mm, ninjas, attack! Yeah. And then the music gets in a little more serious. Like, because now... Oh, what happened? That's right. One ninja guy, uh, Foot Clan member, has an axe, but he tries chopping off Leo's head. Yep. Leo moves and gets gets electrocuted to death, which is just electrocution, I guess, Lee. And, starts, <laughs> and then starts a fire. Yep. yep. And everything starts burning... The good guys escape out through the escape hatch that Which is Dad there. built because you never a, know when you need to. Is it a reason for that? She, he was a bootlegger, maybe or something. Maybe who I knows can't why that's there? He just had to escape from time to time. He's got to get away from the family. This is how he did it. <laughs> so they escape out into the night and actually go out into the country. Yep. Now we're in North Carolina. Uh, uh, before they well, leave, I mean, though. Uh, Casey Jones hears that April has been fired. Doesn't say anything because they're off camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they go out to the country to hang out at the farm. Ralph sits in a bathtub yes. for days. The others go they live hang nature. Yeah, they hang out, and we, yeah, the movie slows down for a moment, and yeah, uh, Casey Jones hangs out with April, and he's Sexual a little crass passion. and and constantly sexually harassing her. Calling yeah. her babe or princess or it at one point it comes dangerously close to the whole um you're being nice but then once you get rejected you're an asshole it, that's immediately what happens yeah, yeah so it was like whoa okay we we know that this is something that's actually a problem with people and I'm seeing yeah. it in a basically a kids movie I'm it, like, it's <sighs> it was very strange yeah. Then he forces herself, like, yeah, she starts giving her a massage. Yeah. Which is it, weird, yeah. but then, I mean. They make she, turtle oh, jokes man. off of Yeah, because wax. yeah, they were working out, and then, yeah, Mikey comes in. He's like, want some ointment? Like, no, he uses turtle wax. It's it's just kind of awkward as an adult. As a kid, you don't notice no, any of I it. didn't notice it at all as a kid. But, but yeah, what's good, though, is going back and forth with Donald Tello helping fix a truck mm -hmm. with uh, with Casey Jones. And they're insulting each other back and forth from the alphabet. Yep. That's fun. And Leo is on constant vigilance uh, or, uh, I guess, bedside or uh, tub side waiting for Raph <laughs> to wake up, which he does. Yeah. Yeah. And Michelangelo just does stuff. He's a party dude. Yeah. He, he's, yeah. But then they have a montage of them practicing and getting better in the woods. And again, April does a voiceover for it all and draws yeah. little scenes out. Yeah, drawing little little caricatures of or no that's actually pretty good drawings yeah, good of each drawings. Of each of the turtles then when they're all awake and they do a meditation yeah. thing they oh splinter's still alive we gotta go back to the city i didn't like that as a kid and it's just kind of awkward as an adult that eh, they use their ninja magic yeah uh, and they see the conjure vision of splinter coming out of the fire to talk to them saying that you're my boys basically don't worry about me when i'm gone you have each other i might be dead but we don't. We don't. We know he's not dead because he's been talking to Danny this Danny entire the time. Whole time. Yeah, yeah. Trying to convince him not to be a bad boy. Basically, yeah. Danny, your father. The loves fathers you. love all of their sons, not their daughters, just their sons. He gets to Danny. Danny leaves the. I was going to call it the apartment, the warehouse, and they know Danny's gone. Like the upper management knows that he's not been around. Upper management means Shredder. Shredder is his father. He knows what's going on. He's a good dad. He pays attention to these things. Oh, and when they didn't catch the turtles back at the apartment, Shredder gets upset with Tetsu, and Tetsu practically murders one of his. Kids. Yeah, he takes it out. His yeah, his anger on one of the guys. That should have been the cue for a whole bunch more to leave. Sure, it's like. like Wait, first we fought turtles, some of us got really hurt, and now you're kicking the crap out of us, and you killed our friend here, basically, or seriously injured him, he's got brain damage now? Fuck this noise, we're out of here. Yeah. But no, they don't. They stick it out. Mm-hmm. Because they're family. So the turtles return to the city, they go into the sewer, 
uh, Casey Jones freaks mm-hmm. out because he's claustrophobic mm-hmm. and thinks they're making fun of him for being gay. Yeah. That but, didn't make any sense to me as a kid. And I missed that it completely was, as a kid. It didn't. It, it doesn't no. work. It that does not hold flow, up. It doesn't. It just seems forced. It is completely forced. And it's funny enough that they're making fun of him for being claustrophobic, for having yeah. a weakness. That's good enough. Yeah. Like, I never looked at no guy like that. No, I mean you're claustro- I mean you're claustrophobic. Yeah, yeah it, whatever. It, so. yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, Danny's been hanging out down there, and and he takes one of the drawings that April mm-hmm. has. Oh, sh- she gives it to him. Yeah, and he he's yeah. And you think that maybe he's made a turnaround, but no. Then he runs he right out. back to the warehouse and tells them where the turtles are again. But luckily, Casey Jones, since he was claustrophobic, he went and slept in the pickup truck, and then saw Danny. Escape yeah. the sewers and then follow them to the kid warehouse. And he blended right into the kids warehouse apparently, until he jumped a foot. And I guess then and used his outfit, stole yeah. his clothes, his, his... which was very cartoony. And yes, I it liked was. It. That was good. Mm-hmm. But then we get another flashback because Danny is talking to Splinter, and we find out that Splinter was a a pet rat. From Japan and yes. his master, Yojimbo. I can't remember. <laughs> I was gonna say Rooki, but nope, that's incorrect. Okay. That's a whole. And other he show. was he was a good martial artist, and he Splinter watched him and yeah. mimicked his martial arts. So that's how Splinter knows martial arts and yes. was able to teach te- the turtles because he watched his master in a yes. rat cage. And then Ur- Urukusaki was his rival. Mm-hmm. He wanted uh, the lady, the lady that they were fighting over, went yeah. to America to escape him. And then killed the, Urukasaki killed them both and sliced one of, of Splinter's ears when he was still just a rat. But then Splinter had like, scratched his face really, really bad. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't know. But Splinter says, I don't know whatever happened to Urukasaki. But Danny, you wear his symbol over your brow. That's when he takes the bandana off and he Reveal. drops it down. And you're like, what? Then we see Sp- Shredder right there who notices, hey, where's your bandana, Pelly? And I'm a good father. You've been missing for a couple of days. Hey, what's this drawing? This here's a turtle. <laughs> the turtles are back. Send all the foot to go kill those turtles. And then the turtles are waiting for them. Because they have advanced to a level because they did a, a fighting montage, practice yeah. montage. So they're better ninjas now. So they they fight on skateboards. They do steam shenanigans. Yeah, well, that makes sense, actually, because they can't see. Like, they just go in like before and the, mm. they beat the crap out of them right away. So it's, it's in fun the steam. Uh, sewer fightings. Yeah, and... They're getting their butts kicked. I mean, the Foot Clan is. And they're starting to run out of the sewer now. They all slide in to get in, and now they're all scrambling. We got got, We're getting our butts kicked now. So the turtles chase them out of the sewer Mm -hmm. and take the fight to the street. Taking it to the streets. Oh, taking it to the streets. (laughs) Eventually end up on a roof with Shredder. And Shredder jumps down. They had beaten up most of the, the Foot Clan. Everyone else has ran away. And now, yeah, the shutter jumps in. And, oh, yeah, then Casey Jones had saved uh, Splinter, Splinter. With and, Danny. With Danny and and hit uh, Tetsuo with <laughs> whatever his name. The second in command Tetsu. with yeah, golf club. with a golf club and eh, takes him out. It, it As an adult, eh, yeah. as a kid, I, I don't remember it being funny, but I was okay with it because it's it, Casey Jones. It's and fine. It he, works. Yeah, it yeah. was fun. Yeah. Yeah, but then takes all the kids that are there remaining, and they follow him for some now, reason. Now, is that one, the kid that's like, come on, man, you got to beat him up. Is that that? That's Sam Rockwell. That's Sam Rockwell. Yes. Look at that. He can't inspire teenagers to fight for him. No, he, doesn't have the, he doesn't have big pointy shoulder pads like, like Shredder does. Anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, Splinter's there, and they're watching him, but then he dis- yeah, disappears. But, the, but more importantly, yeah, the rooftop. Rooftop fight. fight. Which... So far, I it seemed like they planned this choreography out and practiced it mm-hmm. really well. Watching it this time, I noticed that a lot of the movements were very clean, crisp, sharp. They knew what they were doing, and they were doing it really well on time, appropriately. They're doing great moves in these turtle suits. Yeah, holy crap! the The guys in them are. Really good martial artists or, or just gymnasts or whatever, yeah. athletes. But, yeah, they're doing really good movements and high kicks and moving quickly, too. It's not mm-hmm. just, yeah, slow stuff. It's awesome. 
This is, they didn't speed it up. They no. didn't slow it down. This was real time fighting on this rooftop. Actually, all the fighting. All I the think, fights was were real great. Time. Really impressed me with their level of choreography. Even though, mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen plenty of fight movies where they've had over the top fight choreography. Sure. Like, Ong Bak or something like that, where he's we running. watching any any Hong Kong yeah. action film, but this is actually from a production company. I think it was uh, Golden Harvest, and they did a lot of Jackie Chan's movies. Oh, okay. I don't know if he has any relation or this new stunt people or whatever, Maybe. but uh, they knew how to fight. But the turtles are getting their butts kicked by the shredder because they're going one at a time. Yeah, when they huddle up and have a conversation about their strategy. Shredder's just all coolly. He's kind of walking around. He turns his back to him, looking even. at the. <laughs> yeah, and he sh- did he already show off his face at this point? No, he no. did not. Bec- yeah, well, they go and fight now because they say maybe this guy knows where Splinter is. Oh, we killed that rat, and then they yeah. start fighting more angrily. And Leo gets a couple of slashes in. Yep, in on, at least on, his arm. At least I think he hits him twice. At least I want to say at least the more than any other turtle because he's the best turtle. <laughs> Not because not because he's my favorite or because he's the leader. <laughs> well, he's the one with an edged weapon. Accurate. <laughs> At the same time, though, isn't he the one that gets... Yep, because he gets pissed off and then yeah. then he gets pinned down by his uh, uh, shredder spear. Yeah. says, stop uh, or I'll kill Convinces him. Convinces the other turtles to toss their weapons, which I took to... Drop your weapons, not they throw, throw them, them over, over the, the building. <laughs> they did. Just, just throw these things. So luckily, Michelangelo's nunchuck gets stuck on the ladder. Yep. Shredder's doing his evil guy monologue. Splinter makes it to the top of the ladder yep. and calls him out for who he is. Urukosaki. I know. Yes, I know who you are. And that's when he takes out the mask. So he switches the tables, makes Oroku Saki angry, and do something that he shouldn't, which is Charge. balls out, run, run on the with a spear, with a spear at the edge of the rooftop. Yep. Which then Splinter quickly uses the nunchuck to wrap up the spear and shove it to the side and flip. Yeah, yep. the shredder. Pretty badass. It looked it looked as good as it possibly could with, with that Splinter yeah. being a animatronic. I don't think I don't even know if he was had a person in there. Because he was too small. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, but it, looks it looks a little clunky. It looks clunky here and there. For it's what still he can really do. good. Hangs on to him. I, and in my mind, it looks totally like he had no intention of dropping him. No, he was holding on to him. And But then Shredder pulls another knife and uh, Splinter catches it, which causes him to let go and then... Falls into a garbage truck. Falls into truck. a garbage truck, which then Casey Oops. Jones... Turns it on and compacts And murders the Shredder and bends his helmet. Or Or does does he? he? (laughs) But right now, the Shredder's been compacted. He is a compactor. (laughs) Yes. The cops show up, and all the kids are like, whatever, dude. Go to the kid warehouse, warehouse, and that's where you'll find all your answers. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. The rest of the movie's just... You give, give me a kiss, Casey Jones. We're now a couple, apparently. Apparently. I, I get my job back because I'm the only reporter, apparently. And tons of money. Yep. The the, the Sid, Sid Ginger says, I'm sorry, Dad. Yeah. I, I, re- I learned my lessons because a rat told me how, how to be a good boy. Gives money back to April. Yep. And then the ending's good because they're all saying, Rattle, that was... Stupendous or tubular. tubular. My, uh, Donatello can't doesn't know what to say. Mm-hmm. That's when Splinter says, "I have always been partial, or I have always liked Kawabunga." And then they all say Kawabunga. Kawabunga. High they high three. Whatever. <laughs> Same thing. Oh, I made a funny. He's... Could have done without that last yeah. little bit, but you know. And then we get into your rap song, Joe. Yeah. And I hung on because I, I was just like, there's got to be a, a post credit scene where nope. s- something jiggles, something I did too. happens, and it didn't happen. And I was like, oh, that must must have happened in the second one then. I don't remember the second one having a post credit. We'll get to it. No, no, no. Saying that what I was thinking oh. would happen after the credits actually happens in the s- sequel. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yep, there's no post and. There's nope. no, I'll be back. I listened to that full rap song and whatever came after it. There's another terrible 90s rap, terrible song. Well, I mean, 
like nine point nine four. You say, you say five. terrible, but I listen to all the music mm-hmm. in this movie, and it's very appropriate for the time. Yeah, it, it and was, it was like, terrible. It'd be like you know what you would hear on the radio. Yeah, like CNC Music Factory. They didn't have the money for CNC Music Factory. <laughs> they had the ripoff. Of, they had. They B, had. The, it sounded similar they had the to B&C that. Yes. CNC Music Factory. Ooh. No, you can get those guys for cheap. <laughs> but that's the end of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. A uh, lot, lot, lot of nostalgia. So it's hard. Oh, yeah. It's This is a really big movie. Uh, How many times have you watched it since being a kid? I've watched it, I'd say, a dozen times. More than that. I've seen in the last five years, I've probably watched it seven times. Wow. I've watched it a lot, surprisingly. That's, I am surprised by that. I really like this movie <laughs> because I can appreciate it now as an adult seeing – we talked about the, the costumes and how, mm-hmm. how it's shot. It's gritty. It's shot really, really well. Yeah. Uh, I love I, I love almost everything of it. Yeah, there's a couple scenes that fall flat or, yeah, it's really cheesy. Excuse it. Eh, could do it with a better April. That's fine. Yeah. Overall, it's not bad for what it does. Mm-hmm. I, it hits on the marks of being turtles. Definitely, this as a kid watching it, it mm-hmm. was the turtles, and that's why I wanted to do this movie after we watched He Man. He Man or Masters of the Universe was not a good representation no. of of He Man, and, and this movie was perfect, even better than the cartoon. It's just great. I don't know if it was better than the cartoon. We just started watching episode one of the cartoon, and that was pretty rough. <laughs> but that's any cartoon from yeah. the 80s yeah, through the I 90s. They sure. are pretty rough. That's true. So you enjoyed it as much as I did? Yeah, it really took me back to being a kid. It was mm-hmm. after watching Masters of the Universe, you know, that makes you so just like, ugh, what the hell yeah. are people doing? And this one just reminded me a lot of what it was like as a kid watching. The that movie. too, yep. Yep. So I still felt it. Definitely. I was there too. So then the question is, should we recommend it to someone who doesn't know anything about the Ninja Turtles? And that's a really weird statement because I imagine I think every- younger people at this point, because uh, there hasn't been a Turtles since cartoon probably since the early 2000s. There's one that came out in 2012 and oh, went really? for five years. I don't know if it's even still on. Is that the 3D and- animated one? Uh, I think so. It's on Nickelodeon, I think. I There was another one that came in 2003 or something, cartoon, that was on for a while. Then the, yeah, 2012 started. And then we had the two Michael Bay movies, Ugh. which I haven't seen. I haven't I refu- seen. I refuse I to see them. I can only assume that they're terrible. They just don't look interesting to me. And the turtles look like monsters. They and do. I understand that they get the characters kind of right, similar, like, but I have no interest. I don't like Michael Bay's style of movie and sto- and. I'm using air quotes, storytelling, or lack thereof. Yeah. So I have no interest in those movies. And I'm with, so I maybe with Michael Bay movies. So I'd say yes, if you know or like the Turtles, watch. Definitely. You, you, you probably already have watched this. Probably. Yeah. I still love it. I'm probably a lot of nostalgia, but there I don't I don't care. There's absolutely a lot of nostalgia in this. I fucking love this movie. Absolutely makes me feel like a kid again when I watch it. That's good. Well, that was Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, Turtles from 1990, directed by a guy that did the Billy Joel uh, music video and the AHA music video and that Labyrinth music video. Wow. With, uh, with uh, I can't think of his name. Oh, crap, I got Joe Brain. I, <laughs> I can't think of Ziggy Stardust. David Boy. David Boy, thank you. Oh, God, I couldn't think of David Boy's <laughs> name, I'm so sorry. But that's where they got introduced. They, uh, huh. because he had done that music video for David Bowie for Labyrinth, and that's mm-hmm. how I got to know Jim Henson and got Jim Henson's company to do the Turtles outfits. Cool. Okay, cool. Well, if you could rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you download this podcast, that would be tubular. Oh, jeez. Uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at RewindersPod, or you can email us at TheRewindersPodcast at gmail.com. What was your favorite turtle uh, event? Because there were turtle... Turtle event? Like, things that people, you know, whenever something reaches kids, they always try to use that. Did you ever go to a turtle event? Uh, are you talking when they tried going live? Yeah, doing like a, a live show no, or a I never birthday did that. party or anything like that? Nope, uh, I don't know. Um, go ahead, What do you have something? 
I don't know that. I went to a martial arts uh, demonstration uh-huh. at the Cherry Point Mall in Sturgeon Bay, uh-huh. and they dressed up like turtles. Not as good That's of good. outfits, but they did well enough. Okay. And uh, uh, the reason why it sticks out in my head, because mm-hmm. when they were showing how to do uh, roundhouse kicks... Mm-hmm. I don't know which one did it, but one of the turtles just smucked the other one right in the side of the Smuck. head, and everything came to a halt, and everyone's like, <gasps> and then they're all like, oh, it's okay. It's okay, it's and okay. And then they continued, <laughs> and I was just like, that was awesome. I, I awesome. now remember that even wow. now. Wow, the movie helped you remember it. Yes. We'll say, I don't think we'll about yes. that very often, but. No, I don't have any. Nope. 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 What was your favorite toy, then? Uh, <laughs> you said you had tons of turtle toys. Uh, it was just Leonardo. Because <laughs> he had because he had two swords. <laughs> we are the Rewinders. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's not the song at all. <laughs> <laughs>